Those routine tasks, you can just plug in. And now they're coming out with all these plugins. Instead of having to try to figure out how to integrate all your different programs together, you can just tell it, say, ChatGPT, write me a script that will end up creating all these different pieces of content and use these other tools that I have access to. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the Struggle to Strength podcast, your source for real life application on how to turn your struggles into strengths in all things mind, muscle, and money. Chat GPT is fucking cool. Yeah. So I many opportunities. Yeah. I didn't really, like, I, I knew a little bit about it and I had heard people using it for different things. I don't think I fully understand what it was, fully understood what it was capable of or how people like you and I could use it in our own businesses without like replacing ourselves, but just to make some of our processes that much more efficient. Yeah. 100%. So that was awesome. So, for the listeners today, we have Brian Piper on, who is an expert at ChatGPT and AI and has been using AI for what sounds like a really long time. He's really well spoken on it. And we started off by just, I, I just, I didn't even know what ChatGPT was. So everything from what is ChatGPT to how do you access it? How do you use it? What are the use cases that you could utilize it with? Um, how to prompt it to give you data or content or whatever whatever it is that you're looking for it to create what the future of ai might look like the privacy the dangers of doing so um and then like will it replace your job like or is your job at risk so we answer all these questions and brian was a wealth of knowledge he was really helpful in not only explaining what this software was or what ai what this ai was but also like how we can use it and how we either should or should not be afraid of it. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. This one got me really excited. So uh, I hope it gets you excited as well. Um, grab a notebook. We'll see y'all inside. Dude, I'm excited because I know nothing about chat GPT. Uh, it's one of those things where I've heard of it. I've seen what it can do. And I'm like, that's overwhelming. And I need to set aside a lot of time or a conversation with someone like you, Brian, to help me figure out what it is, how I can use it. So uh, to the listeners today, we have Brian Piper here, who is, um, I mean, judging by your your, your bi biography, I would call you almost like a Renaissance man, but you seem to know a lot about chat GPT and that's what we're most interested in. So Brian, why don't you give yourself uh, a little bit of uh, an introduction and you know, let us know who you are and how you came to learn so much about this. You bet. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate it. And Travis, great to great to be here. Great to be on the show. Love what you guys are putting out. Great content so far. Um, so I'm uh, currently the Director of Content Strategy and Assessment at the University of Rochester. So my primary job is uh, looking at data around content performance and figuring out how to optimize that performance based on the data. So I do that for the university and a lot of other different institutions. I also do a lot of, of speaking, uh, keynoting at different events for both uh, content creators and for uh, higher ed institutions. But one of the things we're always looking at, you know, especially in higher ed, is looking at new technologies, new things that are coming out. I've been playing around with, you know, AI and Web3 and some of these different, you know, evolving technologies for the last few years. And you really kind of dove in deep to chat GPT and some of the AI image generating tools that are, you know, coming out in abundance and, and gaining a lot of uh, traction and a lot of new users right now. So it's a fascinating landscape. So look forward to talking with you gentlemen about it. Yeah, I'm excited to learn. Like I said, I, I know nothing about it. I li we literally just learned about Web3 like the other day. So yeah, <laughs> we we had someone on who was explaining the difference between you know Web two, Web three, and the future of the internet, which was really fascinating, and that kind of prompted um, this conversation now. Um, so, I guess the the burning question that I have is like, what the hell is ChatGPT? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, basically, it's a it's a conversational what they call a large language model, right? So a, a learning model. So basically, it's this big computer network of all you know interconnected servers that are using a single data set to kind of get all their information from. So I have this huge set of data that's you know 
gathered from a variety of different sources, from resource uh, research sources, internet sources, all sorts of different areas where where you can you know gather content, and then the computer scrapes all that content and it categorizes everything. And then the way chat GPT is set up is you can just go in there and you can put in a text prompt. You can just ask it for something conversationally and it will reply to the best of its ability based on the data that it has. So you're limited by a few things. You're limited by, you know, the, the way that the network is set up and you're limited by the data that it's pulling its information from. But other than that, you can have full on conversations with this tool and it will provide you with answers. Now, whether or not it pulls those answers from its data set or it just makes up answers, you know, that's something that you have to be aware of that it will do. It will it will just manufacture ideas for you. So it's great for a lot of different uses, but it's not so great for for other things. So does it know like everything? So uh, from my understanding, it's not connected to the internet. Um, Correct. Which I, I, don't, I would, my, you know, I've seen too many movies probably, but I would assume that's so like, it doesn't run away and like take over the earth basically. <laughs> um, yeah. Once you, that's once a terrifying you open thought. Up, right. Yeah. yeah. Once you yeah. open up a data set like that, like if you co connected one of these uh, directly to the internet, there's no filters. The, the, you know, the tool doesn't know what it should be putting out and what it shouldn't be putting out. And even with chat GPT, it went through the data set, went through months of scrubbing by all these people that were going in and manually doing searches and saying, no, you can't, you can't share this with audiences. This was pulled from some source of data that no one, you know, wants to access or no one should be viewing this. So we have to, you know, remove this from our data set. So that doesn't accidentally get triggered by some, you know, racist data or, you know, some conversations, politically charged conversations, things like that, that you don't want included in the information that's going out to, you know, the general public. And so the data set that is trained on, what is that? Is it like, does it, has it seen like everything on the internet basically, or is it like specific things that are fed it or how does that work? So the current, uh, Chat GPT data set is uh, it doesn't have anything later than newer than 2021. So it's okay. pre 2021. But you can ask it, you know, who won the Super Bowl last year and it'll tell you, but it won't be right because it's just right. making it up. It's just but if you said 2020, who won the Super Bowl in 2018, it would tell you. Right. I can tell you that. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, they're they're compiling this data from a bunch of different sources. They don't tell us exactly what those sources are, but just based on you know, the queries that you can do, some of those sources are the internet because it has scrubbed a whole bunch of different, you know, pages online. It, it's, you know, gathering data from some source where it can access internet information, but it doesn't have access to live current, you know, internet yet. Now, there are some plugins that uh, ChatGPT just announced. They're coming out with all these plugins and third-party integrations so that, some of those will probably allow you to input, you know, specific URLs and have it go and pull information from those pages. I think I, I did that recently where I put a URL in and it was able to pull in like, so I, I was like, um, I was doing research for like a documentary and th this is where it really like, I, I was like, wow, I, this thing is in, like insane. So the pre-production for the documentary, you know, I'm going to have to do all this research, write up all this stuff. And I'd say, this is probably gonna take me like four or five days. Um, and so with chat, like chat GPT, I kind of like input all the information and said, like, write up my storyboard for me, add in some extra ideas, you know, help me come up with some ideas, uh, do research on these characters and pull their bios from these links. And it did all of that. So it took me like an afternoon instead of like four or five days. Um, yeah. But it seemed like it was able to, like, I put a URL in of someone's bio and it just like of like a few different links, like a news article about them and their bio. And then it just gave me like a three, three sentence, like summary of that person. So I don't know, is it able to like read websites like that? So it can read websites if those were included in its original data source. So if they scrubbed uh, those websites as part of their building of their original data set, which we know a lot of their original data set does come from, uh, you know, directly from the internet, just how much information they will, were able to scrub and then how, you know, current is that information. Because you can ask it questions about things on websites 
But if those things were just added within the last, you know, two years, it's probably not going to have that information or it's going to make it up. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Um, yeah. And another, like, so one thing that I had seen that was interesting is you could be like, let's say somebody, there's like a, like a fairly well-known author. You could be like, write me an essay in the voice of this person. And it's like pretty accurate. So it's, it, it definitely, like, it seems like it does have like a large chunk of the, the internet and like content out there that it's knowledgeable of. Yeah, absolutely. And it's great at, you know, doing things like that, uh, taking on different personalities. You can have it write an uh, introduction for a presentation or, or for a podcast in the voice of George Carlin, you know, and as you see it and you read that output, you can hear, you know, Carlin's voice in your head. Um, you know, wild. you can use any comedian that has a large, uh, you know, or actors, singers, you know, you can have it write a, a Shakespearean sonnet for you in, you know, the style of IC. So, you, you know, you can do all sorts of very interesting uh, use cases with it. That's pretty wild. So, okay, to back it up a little bit here, two questions. One, how do you actually access it? Like, is it an app? Is it a website? How does all that work? And then two, based on what you're telling me here, this is something that like would have been dangerous to have in high school, you know, like, yeah, yeah. So, absolutely. so, so, so how, how is that going to be managed? Yeah. So I, you know, I'm in uh, higher education. My wife and I have six kids between the two of us from 15 to 23. So, you know, they're in high school and college and they're all using this, you know, they're using it for their homework. They're doing it, re using it for research and the teachers are, you know, trying to figure out, well, how are we going to manage this? If we yeah. assign someone a paper, we don't know if they wrote the paper or not. You can have yeah, it write the paper as, as a high school senior at an eighth grade reading level, or, you know, you can tell it exactly what <laughs> wanted to do. Um, and a lot well, of, since it's pulling all these words and parts and pieces together from all these different sources, it doesn't trigger a lot of the typical standard plagiarism detectors that yeah. teachers and professors are used to using. So they're retraining those models to look for, you know, different chunks of words or different phrases or things like wow. that. So it's a constant, you know, battle kind of back and forth. But yeah, and you just, you, I mean, you just Google chat GPT and there's a link to the website. You can go right to the website and you can just use it. Um, there's a paid version that like a lot of times right now, the traffic on it is so busy. There's so many people using it that it'll say, oh, you know, we're, we're uh, waiting for, you know, your next spot in line so that you can jump in and use the tool. But yeah. You can just keep yeah. refreshing until you get in. And if you pay, I think it's 20 bucks a month, you can get in and like skip to the front of the line. And, you know, you have some, some more features that you don't have in the, uh, in the current free version. We can put the, Euro, the cool. URL in the show notes too, but it's basically chat.openai.com is the URL for to actually use the chat GPT. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. So I just look at it, chat-gpt.com and then you'll open it and it becomes that website. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. in terms of like students and stuff like that, I've, I've thought about that, but like, I feel like that type of thing is more of like a philosophical conversation because like being totally transparent, I don't like, I don't consider myself of like a student, like vocabulary and education. And I'm like fairly like decent at things, but I don't think I, learned anything in school or applied myself at all to anything until like my sophomore year in college. Like I, like maybe here and there, I learned a couple things, but it's not like the actual, like I was cheating on homework anyways, and we didn't have chat GPT. Same. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's yeah. just the way I was, I, you know, I had like ADD and I, I got really good at like, I don't know, like taking short. And so I just wonder if if it's like necessarily even a bad thing, it's like, you know, th there's always going to be ways of doing that. And, you know, if kids want to be like resourceful and use the tools around them well to get something done well, it's like, maybe you just raise this, like, yeah, you can use AI, but the standard of work is going to go way up type of thing. You know what I mean? I don't, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just, in the world to me, it doesn't seem so cut and dry. Like they're going to use this and then they're not going to be smart. It's like, well, I didn't, study anything in high school. And I feel like I grew up fairly smart. You know what I mean? I got really good at getting the work done. Like, uh, you know what I mean? And I think that helped me for like entrepreneurship personally. But, I can see yeah, that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think 
if it's going to do anything, what it's going to do is it's going to change the way that we evaluate students, you know? So instead of just assigning a paper and kid goes home and writes it and hates it, and then they come back in class and the teacher grades it, it's going to have to be like in-person conversations where you're going to have to engage in class to be able to test people's knowledge real time because mm-hmm. you're not going to know if they wrote something or not. So now you're going to actually have to change the way that we, you know, transfer knowledge and the way that we mm-hmm. measure that transfer of knowledge. But I, I see, you know, yeah. originally like New York City schools banned uh, chat GPT on any of their devices. I think that's, you know, an extremely short-sighted way of, you know, you should be teaching this. This is now a new, t- it's like a calculator, the, you know? I remember, I was just going to say the calculator yeah. thing. They were right? like, well, you're going to have a calculator do- in your pocket? It's like, yeah, I, I do now. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, we all do, right? With our phones. But, you know, but, you know, having yeah. calculators. And, yeah, what you just said. Forget how to add. Exactly. And exactly. we can still do math. Right. Yeah. Right. And what you said makes a lot of sense too, because I could see how like, you know, like that, like I said, it's a philosophical conversation. Like what is learning? You know what I mean? Is remembering stuff for a test learning right. is Being figuring it like what is learning? Like if you, if you, if you do all of the work for it using a tool like this, but then you still have to present to the class, I feel like those are better skills. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, you know what I mean? More of like the presentation of the information is a better skill than you actually like retaining it all in your head, which is yeah. you're never going to, you're not going to remember two months later. It's just yeah, no, right. that's just not the way the brain works. So like, and we're already seeing, you know, new jobs that are being created from uh, AI. I just saw my first job posting for chat uh, for prompt engineer, you know, so now they're looking for people who can tell these tools how to give them what you want, you know, and that's one of the things that we learn as we start using this is you can go in and just say, write an essay about Ben Franklin, Boom, you know, and it's going to give you a very blank cookie cutter you know, whatever you would find just doing a Google search. But now you can go in and you can say, you know, write this, make it funny, include references about this, talk about his early life. You know, you can craft that based on the prompt that you give it to give you what mm-hmm. you want to get at the end of it. So it's all about learning You're that. You're still being language. creative. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is this is interesting. So there, there are it sounds like almost infinite use cases for this. And what I'm thinking of is specifically, I know, I know you do a lot of work with content and social media and like, there's a lot of ways that people could come across as experts now on the internet. Not that they already don't, cause they already are doing this, right? right. And especially in the fitness industry, I'm in the fitness industry. People don't care if you have a hundred thousand followers, you might as well be an expert. Right. Um, but what I'm thinking now is like it could be it'll be really easy for people to write very intriguing and believable pieces of content that make them that present them as experts, but they actually don't know how to apply any of that information. So I, I guess to to ask you about or even cases, if that information is correct. Or even if right. it's correct, you're right. right. Yeah, we don't even know if it's correct. It could be it could be inaccurate and they wouldn't yeah. know. Yeah. So, so let me, yeah, let, let me tell you, like, a, from a fitness standpoint, right? You could go into Chat GPT and say, you know, write me up a nutrition program that gives me, you know, these macros. I want oh, this much protein, this much over, spread it out over a week, generate recipes for it. It'll do all of that, but it doesn't know how that's impacting you, whether or not that's the right thing for your, yeah. you know, metabolism, your age, your workout routine, you can have it right. You know, here I want to do, uh, you know, I want to work out five days a week. I want to do, you know, CrossFit one day. I want to do cardio the next day. I want to do weights. It'll spread your whole, it'll write the entire different, you know, all the routines, all the exercises and everything, but it's not, it's not really fit to you. Um, yeah. and you can go in and train it. You can go in and change it and say, okay, now I don't want to do cardio on Tuesday. I want to do more, you know, CrossFit and so it it's super powerful, but it doesn't have that underlying knowledge to know how this is going to impact the big picture. It doesn't see that, you know, big picture view. It's just giving you exactly what you asked for. Mm-hmm. So my job is safe. <laughs> my job is safe. Yeah, yeah. So right. my job is safe. But, yeah, so, but it sounds like I can use it to my advantage. For example, if an athlete wanted a meal plan and I'm like, well, I know what I like to eat. I don't really know what they like to eat. If they told me some of the foods that they like. 
I know how much they should be eating from a caloric and a macronutrient perspective. I could ask chat GPT, hey, write me a meal plan with these foods that fit these guidelines. And it would do that. Exactly. And you could oh, even put in your own, you could use your own meal plan as a source material. You can copy and paste that right in and say, now write the same thing with the same macros, but I want you to not use sweet potatoes and, you know, no pasta or something like that. Wow. And it'll, yeah. So it's more like you, cool. what, what, what might've taken you, like once you get going with this thing, I, I could see there's probably, that's, that's what I want to talk about next is like use cases. So that's one use case for you. Let's say like meal, like writing meal plans or, or like changing meal plans. Yeah. So it's like what might've taken you a whole day or maybe multiple days to do all your clients. You might be able to get done in like an hour. Cause you right. just, you just, you have like different chats for each person and you're like update with this information, boom, spits it out. Yeah. Now let me tell you another use case that I encounter all the time that would be helpful for, for you on your podcast is, you you know, you record the podcast, you edit it, you get it at all ready. And then what you can do is you can export your, uh, you know, the audio and you can transcribe it using Otter AI or one of these other AI right. tools that'll give you all your captions. And then you can copy and paste that right into chat GPT and say, write show notes for this show, create, you know, five tweets that are, you know, key, uh, points that we can take out of the show, write those up as, you know, 280 character tweets, uh, write a blog post about this. And it'll just spit all that right out. And then you can use that, put that right on, you know, your website. It'll write a website page for you. It'll build wow. code. Yeah. Wow. So it's this great is... for automating these tasks, for doing anything that doesn't require a lot of decision making or, you know, figuring out what strategically aligns with your business the best. Yeah. Those routine tasks, you can just plug in. And now they're coming out with all these plugins. So now instead of having to try to figure out how to integrate all your different programs together, you can just tell it, say, ChatGPT, write me a script that will, you know, take my video from our podcast and end up creating all these different pieces of content and use these other tools that I have access to. Dude, this is, this is wild. This is, this is like completely expedites every, like, like you said, simple task. It's, it's like a $20 VA. It's right. the cheapest yeah. virtual assistant yeah. you'll ever have. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. And you can do it, you know, it's great for like idea generation. If you're brainstorming yeah. topics, like if I'm doing a presentation, I'll, I'll write an outline for that presentation. And then I'll go to chat GPT and say, write me an outline for this presentation. And I'll look through its list and say, oh, well, I could use that too. Or no, I don't need to include that. And then you can say, write a funny introduction for this presentation in the style of, you know, whatever comedian you like. Mm -hmm. And it'll come up with a whole bunch of different ideas. You can pick and choose which pieces of those you like to help you come up with different ideas, uh, you know, brainstorm different topics. And you, it's great for writing titles. If you want to write a title for this episode, you can go uh, yeah. into ChatGPT, paste in the copy and say, come up with 20 different titles that are engaging, make the user want to click on it, you know, drive them towards our website or whatever it is. And it'll spit out 20 different ideas for you to go, no, nah, that's not good. This is good. I want this word, you know. That's amazing. And now is this, I know it's called chat GPT. Is this specific to text or does it also work with any sort of graphics? So the the current version, they just, re, they just launched the newest version, which is GPT-4, which is a, a new language model. And the idea is that that's going to allow you to integrate images into it so you can uh, paste in an image, it'll read the text off of that image. But there are other tools like Dolly and Mid Journey that will, you take a prompt and you put it in those tools and it will generate an, uh, an image for you. Now they have tools that will generate videos for you. But you can use, like I'll use ChatGPT as a prompt engineer. I can, you go into ChatGPT, I'll say, act like a prompt engineer. I'm going to tell you what to do. And then I want you to give me recommendations on how to make this prompt better Here's the tool I want to use it for. Here's what I want my image to look like. And then you you hit enter and it'll say, okay, you know, what, uh, what examples do you want to have? And, you know, what tone do you want to use? And do you want your image to be bright or dark? And it'll tell you all the new things that you should add to your prompt to make your prompt as specific as possible so that you get the best output out of it. 
What do you mean by prompt engineer? Is that for like generating images with like motion, whatever it's called? So, so a, a prompt engineer, basically, this is a new uh, job title that's come up. So you can tell chat GP, chat GPT to act like any profession, act like a fitness trainer and tell me yada, 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 you know, act like an expert SEO um, practitioner and tell me how to make my web pages show up higher on the search engines, things like that. Oh, wow. So I said, act like a prompt engineer. So someone who would know how to write the best prompt and tell me how to make my prompts better. So you can mm -hmm. tell it to act like a coach for you, you know, and act that, like a football coach and tell me, you know, four different plays that are going to let me beat the Browns this weekend, you know? Oh, wow. So you mean wow. prompt engineer as in like a prompt engineer for chat GPT prompts? Correct. So yep. you're saying I, like be a chat GPT prompt engineer expert. Now here's my dumb way of saying this. It's going to spit it out in a perfect chat GPT prompt. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So the way that you've built prompts for some of these different tools is very different. Like in mid journey, it, it started off where you had to put in, you know, here's the styles that I want. Here's the lighting effects that I want. And now you can just give it like a mood that you want, you know, make it a dark, you know, evil looking picture and it'll just know what lighting to use and what colors to use and things like that. That's really cool. So when you're, when you're referring to prompts, um, the, the prompt is essentially you asking something of, of the AI, right? Um, and the more specific you yeah, ask, just the, the words more resources with. that you give, the better the result is going to be is what it sounds like. Okay. Um, so, so rather than like exactly. yep. who won the Super Bowl in 2018, you could be like, why did, I don't even know who played in 2018, but like, why did the losing team, like what was the cause of their loss or, or whatever it is and give them some information. They can tell you like exactly what happened throughout that game for why they lost. Yeah. That's, yeah. Okay. Definitely. So no. yeah, Josh, your, your question there kind of cut out in the beginning. Um, are you, could you just say that one more time on, on my end? So it'll be like on this audio. Could you just mm -hmm. say that one more time? Like you, I think that was a good question. Like you had a question about like how to write prompts or what were you asking? Yeah, about? I was just, I was asking what the prompt was and it, what it sounds like is the prompt is you asking the AI to execute a task for you. And it seems like the more specific the prompt is and the question is or the request on your end and the more resources that you provide, the better the result is from the AI. Yep. Yeah. I've heard a, a great statement recently from people that, you know, we're, your job isn't going to get replaced by AI. Your job is going to get replaced by someone who knows how to use AI better than you. <laughs> so it's knowing what questions to ask because I can go into chat GPT or mid journey or any of these tools and I can ask questions all day long, but until I ask the right question, I'm not going to get what I'm looking for, you know, I'm not going to yeah. get the right information. I'm going to have to keep going back and forth and be like, no, now make it darker. No, now make it funnier. No, now make. But if I give it all of that up front and I know exactly how to like get all those details that the, t that the tool needs, it'll be a much faster process. Mm -hmm. So what are, do you have any tips for writing prompts? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. It, but besides asking chat GPT how to write prompts, <laughs> right? Cause it sounds yeah, like you it, can do that. Right. It is. And it's a, it's a great, uh, it's a great hack. It's a great workaround. It just depends on, you know, what you're trying to get out of it. So the more detail you can give the better, and it'll tell you, you know, if uh, you'll be able to see in your feedback, if it's very broad, you wouldn't be like, no, 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 now narrow it down. And that's the nice thing about it is it's conversational. So you can put in a prompt, ask it one question, it gives you a response and then you can say, okay, no, Make that same response funnier. Make that same response more pointed. Put in a call to action to send people to this page, and it'll keep building and growing on that previous response so you can craft it the way you want it. But the more specific and precise you can be up front, the quicker you're going to get to your, your final destination. That makes, that makes sense. That makes it super helpful that it's conversational. I feel like it would be so frustrating if it wasn't, and you're just like, all right, asking the same prompt a million different ways. Right. But the fact that you can have a conversation with it and it continues to refine it, um, that makes it way more user friendly. I, I feel at this point, just with the, from uh, the conversation that we've had thus far, like I, I feel comfortable that I would be able to figure it out. Right. 
Yeah. yeah. And once you get in there, start playing with it. Yeah. You, you'll you come up with all sorts of ideas. Okay. Another, another yeah. good point I think that I figured out was like each new chat. Oh, I don't know if this is correct. So this is, this is a statement slash question. Each new chat seems like it's kind of like a new person. Like it's a blank slate. Exactly. But once you start that chat, it's a learning person. So you could say like, you're now a fitness expert or you're now a prompt expert and it'll learn that. But it also remembers everything that you talked about. So like, like when I was going back and forth with it a bunch coming up with this storyboard, you know, it was like slowly learning. It was learning all of that. So then later, like everything was, it started putting out like better stuff. So like, I kind of planned out like, okay, develop like the initial ideas, then the storyboard, then the interview questions. So by the time we get to the interview questions, it knows all the specific information. Um, is that kind of a tool? Is that, first of all, is that correct? And then is that a tool as in like a way of using it? Like when would you start a new chat versus when would you want to, because like to me, it seems like you are now a prompt expert. You would want to keep that as your like prompt chat. So you're like consistently going, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Do, how do you use that? At, I guess. Yep. That's exactly right. So it'll keep your history of your conversations. So then you can go back at any point to continue any of those conversations from where you left off. So I do have one conversation that's just, you know, act like a prompt engineer. And then I'll go into that anytime I'm building a new prompt. I'll use that. I'll hit it until I'm ready to actually run that prompt. Then I'll go open up a new chat and put in that prompt. And then that way it's a whole new conversation that I can go back to, to say, okay, now based on that original information you gave me on that prompt, that outline you generated, now write a conclusion, come up with 20 questions for students or, you know, anything like that. Yeah. Cool. That's really smart. So you keep the act like a prompt engineer chat open. So it's continuously learning. And yes. then you just copy paste that prompt and it gives you into a, into a new chat. Yeah. That's really cool. Wow. This, yeah. this stuff is fascinating, man. What are some other, like, what do you, what are kind of like the main use cases, I guess, like, I guess you could uh, consider like Josh and I, like we're both, you know, entrepreneurs, like we run, you know, like small businesses, we kind of like do everything. I've obviously got like the video production company. Uh, Josh has like the, you know, the fitness brand. So like what, I don't know, what are kind of like the main use cases for us slash in general? And I guess what are like the main things, like we said, it's kind of like having a cheap VA. Like what are the main yeah. things that you see it kind of like taking off of our plates? as an example. Yeah. I mean, the, the biggest impact is going to just become from idea generation. So, you know, I run a, a gym, give me 30 new ways to increase my revenue at the gym. And, you know, 20 of those may be things you're already doing. Five of those may be things that you would never do, but five of them may be new ideas of new ways to generate income or do things, you know, what can I offer my members at my gym that no other gym offers? give me 10 reasons or 10 things. And then it's done with those. And you're like, no, I already offer all those. Give me 10 more. And you can just keep going back to it and going back to it. So it's great for, you know, the idea generation. I use it whenever I'm traveling. I'm like, what are the best things to do in this city? It'll give me a whole list of, you know, different ideas. And I'll be like, no, just make this focused on, you know, outdoor activities or, you know, just That's make this, cool. you know, only include you know, rock climbing and skydiving things in here or whatever, you know, so you're just limited it down to whatever parts of that data set you want to access. So it can be faster than a Google search in some instances, which is why Google has come out with BARD and uh, um, Bing has integrated chat GPT into its search is because now you have this one answer for your search that immediately gives you what it thinks is the best response. So now it's not know, the SEO trying to game who gets to the top of the list and who gets the number one rating. Now it's whatever chat GPT pulls from all of its databases to think that this is the best answer. So we're going to see, you know, over the next year or so, how that actually works within the search environment, how much people are using that versus actually scrolling through the search results and, and navigating to those. But from a creator standpoint, all sorts of ways to, you know, for, for your podcast, give me 20 questions that I should ask this guest. And if the guest is big enough and it can go out and find, you know, information about them on the, online from their data set, it'll give you 20 different questions, you know, give me a list of 15 people who I should have on my podcast about this particular topic who are experts in the, in the field. So it's great for research. You know, I think as it starts integrating with other tools, 
you know, we can get it integrated into our email lists. We can get it integrated into our, you know, CRM systems. It can automatically be generating content, putting the content up on your website, pulling directly from your, you know, video that you just uploaded to YouTube, doing all the transcriptions coming up. You know, a lot of that is going to be automated really soon within, you know, months, if not, you know, a handful of years. Yeah. Yeah. So it seems like something to just like everybody, pretty much everybody that, you know, I think everybody like it's, you should start figuring it out now. So, yeah. you know, you just kind of start slowly, start figuring it out because in the next, yeah, like months or years, it's going to be uh, people who are implementing this are just going to be so much more efficient than everybody else. It's going to be tough to, you know, if you're like, well, I got to sit down and figure this thing out. And it's like, well, your competition just did a hundred of those in one second and they're already done. It's like, you're going to kind of need yeah. to like figure this out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so and it's going to, I think it's going to have a big impact in, in what we're consuming. Cause there's going to be so much AI generated content out there. I think it's going to be more and more important for people to have interactions like this, where you mm -hmm. see people actually talking live to each other and you know, I mean, we can't do it yet where we're all, you know, fully computer simulated, but these are not conversations that you could replicate with AI. Mm -hmm. So people are going to look for that authenticity, that human yeah. connection, because they're going to know that this is real and this wasn't just some, you know, robot that generated my, mm -hmm. my latest workout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Another yeah. thought I had about that too is like, I think a lot of these things, people get nervous. So like when I first hear this, I was like, oh my God. Because like right now, if you use chat GPT and like whatever the, uh, whatever the image generating AI is, mid journey, you train chat, it, yeah, uh, mid journey. If you train chat GPT to be really good with mid journey, it'll spit out prompts and generate images that are like better than a lot of um, photographers than like, you know, Stock photos, it's yeah. in the 50th percentile of photographers basically. Um, and so I think people see stuff like that and then they're just like, oh my God, you know, my, like, is this going to take my job? And right. I think, I've thought about it, especially in like the creative world. And I think, I think it's just going to take like, yeah, it's going to take like the bottom of the barrel jobs. It's like right. when it comes to like, you know, really poorly made like explainer videos and informational videos and stuff like that, it's going to be able to, it's going to be able to write that copy and animate it. So right. if you're a videographer and like your job is like, really high volume, low quality, cranking out content for people, you need to learn how to improve your video skills, improve your marketing skills and start working for different clients. Cause it's, your job is gone soon. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? But like, that's not what I do. Um, right. and I think the, a lot of business owners, like they're not necessarily going to want to figure this stuff out. They're still going to want to work with a person who can, who they trust, who it's like, you know, maybe a part of my business is cranking videos like that out using chat GPT, but then like my specialty is helping them with marketing. It's creating like really high quality videos. People are still going to want to work with a person that they like to work with who like does that stuff. And like, I think it's going to be a while before AI could create like a, you know, cinema quality, like movie from scratch. Like, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I don't know. It's just like, I feel like, you know, it, yeah, it, it might, for a lot of careers, it might take kind of like the bottom, you know? uh, the bottom away. It's like, if somebody just wants to pay five bucks a month for like new workout plans, why would yeah. they do that when chat GPT can crank them out? But if they want a coach that they know to work with, to help create the body of their dreams, AI is not going to do that for you. Yeah. So, exactly. you know what I mean? So, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like, yeah, it's just like, it's like the time to like figure out how to use these tools and then become better at what you do. And then you probably will be fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. So, something you mentioned, Brian, that I'm interested in is you referenced automatically generating content and automatically posting it to your website. Is that something that's going to be coming soon or is that something that this can already do? Yeah, so you could like if you access they have an API so you can directly access the uh, code behind the, uh, you know, behind chat GPT. So you could integrate that into your website where it would dynamically generate new content that would be uploaded every day, but you'd have to be able to write some code and figure that out on the okay. back end. But these plugins they're coming out with, that's the idea is that you could conversationally tell chat GPT, you know, through these different accounts that I have, here's the information that you need to get into my server for my website. 
you know, every day go in and post new content to my page. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're talking about, you know, this is great for sports scores, you know, all these things, all your fantasy football stuff. That's all AI generated. Anyway, you get those emails that, you know, here's the rundown of everybody's, you know, performance over the weekend. That's, you know, no one needs to manually go in and type those out. But when you start talking about strategy and, you know, who's going to be benched and who's going to, that's stuff that the AI can guess and make up, but it's not going to have that underlying, you know, years of experience and, you know, true uh, expertise that you need to be able to make those sorts of, you know, predictions and assumptions. Mm-hmm. No, something that I would sort of be hesitant about, and I, I haven't looked into this, maybe you can help me out here, is if I'm giving chat GPT the my username and password information to get into my website to be able to take what i post on instagram write it into a blog from a video and then post it onto my website is that still mine or is that oh, yeah. an excellent question so when you start talking copyright and ownership this is all new territory right there's yeah. no Actually, the only regulations that that are out. So currently, the the government said that you cannot uh, copyright AI generated content. So if you're creating okay. AI content and throwing that up on your website, you don't own it because it all came from this you know big huge data set that you don't really know where to attribute that information to. You can't cite your sources. So they've already said you know you you can't own that information. So who wants to be putting up information on their website that they don't own? you know, that, that they didn't actually generate and maybe didn't even edit or look at to see if it's actually truthful yeah. or, you know, so that's where you're going to get back to this, you know, the, the whole idea of authority and expertise is going to be based on actual human experience versus just what the AI said, because yeah, that's what its data set said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting. So, so does, at this point, does everything that ChatGPT uh, creates, or is it owned by ChatGPT? Are uh, you froze? Can you hear oh, us? No. Okay, I can Chat hear GPT. you. Yeah. So, so yeah. The question: is, Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah we can hear you now. Uh, is, is everything at this point? Is everything that is created by ChatGPT owned by ChatGPT? Well, technically, it's not not owned by anybody because okay, so the, not even they own. It. Okay, it's a not great, even they own yeah. it. Right. Yeah, because the data set isn't all their information. So actually, Adobe just took an interesting take on this. So they just uh, announced that they've got a whole new suite of AI tools, the uh, the Firefly tools, that are pulling from their rights managed data, so that when you're generating an image using their tools then you can prove who owns the access to all of those rights and images so that now Adobe can say, yes, you can, you know, copyright this as yours. If, you know, uh, if you're pulling just from our data set, because it's all royalty free images that you're pulling from. So see, I think like we, we, we recently did an episode about like NFTs and, you know, I was just looking at the notes from that one. (laughs) Yeah. Like NFTs, like they're like, why would you buy a JPEG of like a Fox or something? And it's like, well, that's just one way, but like, I could see, and you know, I'm not an expert on this stuff, but I could see how this could be integrated where it's like, you know, NFTs having like a really fast and efficient way of kind of like stamping and owning something. Then it's like, as content gets uploaded, it things like AI would be able to keep track of all those different numbers, like as they put it out. And then you would actually know like who owns what, and you could maybe, you know, it's like on Google maps, you, you select like, um, no toll roads. Maybe you could select like no copyright information or whatever, yeah. stuff like that. Like you exactly. could be able to track all that stuff. Yep. Yeah. And that's a perfect use for the blockchain. You know, you'd be able to put all that out publicly. So now if you post an image, people can see where, you know, if it was AI generated, they can see all the sources that were used to compile that image. Yeah. So if you sell that for like a hundred grand, it's like maybe each person gets some royalties or whatever. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Wow. That's dude, the whole world has changed in the past couple of years. It's wild. this is going to have like why like sweeping impact on so many different areas. You talk about the whole legal, you know, all, uh, the lawyers are basically all about looking through, you know, previous use cases and documentation. And now if ChatGPT can do that for us, you know, 
mean, it can go in and it can write a legal document for us. It can write a, you know, a will. Yeah. And it's all legal because it's all being pulled from all of these different, you know, legal documents and case law. And so it's going to be I very didn't even think of that. Be, yeah. For, yeah. for all of your like legal documents, your contracts, your liability waivers, like everything that we use. Yeah. This is all, this can all be AI generated now. So not only, yeah, not only are we becoming more efficient, but we're actually alleviating the need for a lot of different resources. You know, you might not need a lawyer to write those documents for you when you're starting up your business. You might not need, you know, X, Y, or Account. Z. Yeah, you might yeah. you might not need a big accountant. Wow. Yeah. That that's that scares me a little bit. <laughs> yeah. See, like for me, at least for now, anyways, I would still like you know, I would still want to. For now, anyways, I, I still want to pay a CPA. Yeah, because I still want a person. I'm not leaving. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, you know what happens when you fuck that up? It's called prison, and I don't <laughs> want to go there. So, like, it, yeah, I still want to like pay someone who yeah. can guarantee that I'm not going to go to prison for a stupid mistake. Right? You know what you're, I mean? You're not so, you can't just say, "Oh, the AI did it." Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I think we've. I think we're more. I think we're more like a you know decades away from it fully replacing stuff like that, just because people aren't going to trust it. It's like, right. maybe you yeah. don't need that CPA, but it's like how much, you know, I'd rather pay somebody. And it's like, maybe they can take on more clients and charge less type right. of thing. Right. They and can so, generate those contracts for the draft form of it and then yeah. go through legally or, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure you, that they can all charge right. half as much and do 10 times as, as much work. Exactly. I'd rather do that. And then they are checking through all of it and they're, they have their insurance and they have everything. Like I'd rather, you know, that's what I see. That's where I personally see it going instead of like, just nobody needing anyone. Like people are still going to like at the end of the day, if something goes wrong, you're going to, you still want to talk to a person, you know, yeah. right. Yeah. It's like, all right, let's figure <laughs> this out. Let me alleviate your anxiety for a second. If everyone's just talking to robots all the time, even if they're really good robots, I can, I can see situations where like things happen and then you just kind of screwed. I don't care well, how I mean, good the robot I'm talking to is if I'm on the phone, I'm pressing Z. Like I want to talk yeah. to a person. Oh yeah. Just right. give me a person. Right. Yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> And we, I mean, we see that all the time is, is, you know, people that I, I'm just going to, you know, come up with my own workout routine and just going to figure out my yeah. own diet, you know, and it doesn't work and it doesn't work. And then they're like, oh, maybe I need a coach. You go and you see a uh -huh. coach who's like, well, no, that you're doing this wrong. You're doing this, you know? So it's yeah. definitely that personal feedback, that individual who is paying attention to what you're doing and how, and knows the whole picture of how other things may affect, you know, well, you're not getting enough sleep. You're obviously, you know, not going to progress as well if you're not giving your body time to recover. And so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think the the initial fear of like, this is going to replace everyone's jobs, it, it lasted for a little bit. But I think once we've learned a little bit more about this, it's like, okay, well, you can't take the coaching aspect out of coaching. You know, you can't take right. the personal um relationships out of so many of these different jobs but the people who are in those industries whether it's coaching accounting law whatever it may be they can now use chat gpt and ai to become that much more efficient and effective so they can help more people for like travis said a lower cost and that's probably the direction that this is going to be heading in which yeah, exactly. So when, cool. like when I get a, a marketing agency or a, a another institution reach out to me about, well, we need to figure out how to get, you know, AI integrated into our processes. What tools should we use? It was like, it, it all depends on what, what your processes are and where there are opportunities to streamline those using AI tools that are already out there. Don't try to force the AI tool into your workflow, figure out where it fits in there and where it's actually going to save you time or money. Because in a lot of times it doesn't, you know, we, we had our writers, here you go, here's chat GPT, check it out. And they were in there for hours playing around and not writing anything or doing anything <laughs> until you figure out how to see, you know, integrate it into your process in a way that makes your process better or mm -hmm. faster or more creative. Then, you know, you're just, you're just wasting time and, you know, researching, which is great. But at some point you've got to actually pull the trigger and, and integrate it into your workflow. Yeah. Do you have any extra tips for that? Like figuring out how to integrate it? Yeah. So the best way, you know, document your workflow. So I tell people this all the time, you've got to document your process. Now there are ways to use AI tools to help you with that. Uh, I was working with someone uh, a couple of weeks ago 
and they were recording, doing a video recording. Every time they did a new process, they had to, you know, uh, edit a podcast or something like that. They would go through the process and, you know, do a screen capture while they talked through what they were doing. And then at the end of that, they'd output the transcript, have chat GPT, write a step-by-step -step checklist of how this process is done, how much time each of these uh, steps in the process took. And then you look at all those steps and you say, oh, well, it took me, you know, 35 minutes to write my show notes up. Well, chat GPT can do that in three minutes. So there's a 32 minute savings right there. If I can just integrate that into my process there, and then you have to test it to make sure it actually does that consistently. It reduces your workflow that there's not something that, you know, screwed it up. So now you have to go back and you have to try it again. And now you're spending, you know, 35 minutes working on, you know, so it's all about documenting your process, figuring out what, you know, parts of your process are taking you how much time and then figuring out if an AI tool can do that particular thing faster. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like it, it, there's a little bit of a learning curve here, right? So, you know, this is one of those things where you put a little bit of time into making sure that this is doing it correctly. And then you never really have to worry about it again. But yeah, if you're not absolutely. putting that little bit of time into making sure that it's doing it correctly, then you're all, you're never going to get that time back. So, right. And there's, and there's that upfront time too, where you're actually learning this tool. So that's why yeah. I'm telling people just go play with chat GPT. At least you're getting that interaction with these large language models. You're starting to understand like how they work and how this conversational style, you know, goes and what questions I need to be asking. And once you kind of get a, get a handle on all that, then it makes it easier to go to any other AI tool and be like, oh, well, here's, here's the things I know I need to include in a prompt to get what I want out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, this is really cool. I'm excited to play with it now. I've never played with it. So now I'm excited. I'm going to figure it out. And I already have, after this conversation, some ideas of things that would help me in my business. The meal plan idea was great because, you know, when, when we have athletes in prep for bodybuilding shows, that I want to be in full control of what foods that they're eating. And so I'll probably right. make those on my own. But for lifestyle athletes, we're like, hey, I think I'd do better on a meal plan. Okay, cool. Tell me the foods that you like to eat. And I'll just... ChatGPT makes it up in a couple of minutes, much easier than me building it out in my fitness pal, you know, taking like an hour or so. Um, yep. So yeah, I just used is, it last night. I went to the refrigerator last night. I was like, here's the ingredients that I have in my refrigerator. <laughs> Write me a recipe that uses all of these. So that is so cool. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's wild. Yeah. That's really cool. Even uh, well, I hope you clear the rest of your things. schedule for today, Josh, because you're going to be going right down that <laughs> rabbit hole. <laughs> Asking conversations and questions. <laughs> yeah. So I hope I get some sleep tonight because I'm probably going to be having yeah. a lot of fun with it. And even just the thought of going to a new place. And, you know, I usually find I was talking to my dad about this recently. Um, we go to a new place. He wants to find good restaurants. He goes to Google. I want to go find good restaurants. I go to Instagram because I like to be able to see the pictures. Now That's right. we can go to ChatGPT. And I imagine you keep that chat open, chat GPT will learn the kind of foods that you like to eat and pro mm -hmm. provide you with better recommendations, more specifically tailored to you. Exactly. Which is really cool. Based, based on my question from last time, now do the same thing for when I go to Austin. Yeah. To yeah. Oh man, that's so cool. Yeah. But you know, one thing to remember about these data sets is not only is it the time element, right? It's how current that data set is. But also one thing we know about data sets is they tend to be like, they tend to discriminate. They're built with certain groups of people, certain classes of people, certain races, that that's the people that they're getting the information from to build the data set. So that data set is not necessarily representative of the culture, the society in general. So just make sure when you're you know getting output from that, that you remember that this is a, a limited data set. This is not, you know, representative of everyone. And, you know, we see it all the time in the image generation tools. Unless you ask for diversity in the people that are going to be generated in your image tool, a lot of times it skews one way, you know. Yeah, that's a really good point to remember. Well, man, Brian, this was super helpful. I really enjoyed this conversation. We usually keep it pretty short and this one just kept going and I feel like we could talk, talk about it forever. But I, I really appreciate you sharing your expertise with us on this and helping me learn to start like what it even was 
and all the different use cases that I could have and that hopefully our listeners can have as well about how they can take advantage of it. So uh, I really appreciate you coming on, man. This was a phenomenal conversation. Hey, my pleasure. I enjoy it. I, I love talking about it. I tell people all the time, like, I'm not an AI expert, but I'm an AI enthusiast. I love playing <laughs> with it. I love seeing what it can do. And I love hearing what other people are doing with it. So, you know, if people out there in your audience are trying it and doing new things with it, shoot me a message and let me know. I'd love to, I'd love to, you know, keep current on what's going on and especially with all the different areas that this is being used in. Yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. And to that point, um, I know I'm going to want to follow you and keep in touch. And I know our listeners going want to want to as well. Where can we find you? What do you got coming up? Give yourself the plug uh, of how we can access you. So brianwpiper.com and pretty much Brian W. Piper on any social platforms. Uh, I just finished, uh, just came out with a new book. I was the co-author for Epic Content Marketing, the second edition of that. So Joe Polizzi and I rewrote his uh, first edition, which is what got me into content marketing in the first place. Um, and so we we re-updated the entire book. It was 10 years ago, the first edition. So the second edition, we just launched that. And it's got all sorts of information in there about, you know, not only how to, you know, start content marketing and how to, you know, improve your content marketing, but also all the new technologies. It talks about, we got a whole chapter on AI. We got a chapter on Web3, lots of conversation about communities and super fans. And so, yeah, but great to connect with you. It was amazing to connect with you as well, Brian. And uh, thank you again for coming on. And thank you to everyone who's tuned in to another episode here of the Struggle with Strength podcast. We will see y'all next week.